It is like this, you know, they, they destroyed before they, there was a homes back on the back side and they destroyed before and now they are destroying their part and people saying that they are, they are going to come to this part as well. So it's going to change, you know, it's every day, you, you, do, uh, you know, I can't tell you anything confirmed, we can't, like anything can happen and uh, today is there, tomorrow can be here and we don't know how it's gonna go. What's happening today? Uh, they are destroying many places like uh, guys build their restaurants and rooms and places to live. They are destroying all and they are going on and on and on. We can't, we can't change it, we can't stop it, you know. Is it, is it safe to live here? How, how do you feel? Mm, no, it it is safe to live here, but without police involvement, you know, we don't need police. It was good, no fight, no killings, like nothing happens here. So, but I don't know what's gonna, like what's gonna happen in the future, you know. But they, they basically they want to control us. They want to control all people, and they says they got space space for fifteen hundred guys, and they are not responsible responsible for the others. But it's not a solution, you know, where other people are going to go. So I can't say anything before, you know, what's going to happen. We need to wait and watch. And have you um, found any uh, conflict between the people um, staying here and uh, the French nationals? Uh, there, are, there are many guys who don't like us. Like there was a group of seven people. They've been beating many refugees in the cities, on the streets, and they did many wrong things to the people. But still, there are many people from Kele who help us, who live their life for us. They provide us many things for living, and they, they really help us with the things, you know. So it's 50-50, you know. I, I can't say all are bad, I can't say all are good, you know. So it's. I know you don't, if, if you feel uncomfortable talking about it, then you just say, you can say you don't want to talk about it. Yeah, but no. can you see yourself going back to Pakistan? Sorry? If, can you see yourself going back to Pakistan? Uh, I need to skip this question. Okay, no, no, no problem. Yeah, no yeah. problem. Um, and um, uh, how, um, how do you see the future for the camp? Uh, I think in future the camp not going to exist as they are doing but I don't know I, you know it's before time if I say something you know about this situation you know we need to wait and watch but they're going to destroy all they are they will come here again and again and again and they will do but I don't know about future what's going to happen so we need to wait and watch is, is that generally from the people you speak to the mood like uh of an uncertain future or do people have firm plans about where they're going to move on to next? 
um, you know, there's no other space like uh, no other place like that the way we can live like that. If we go to other countries like Belgium, they, they don't let us go. If we go to Italy, there is no place to sleep or somewhere, you know. Here in jungle, I know where I'm gonna sleep tonight and where I'm gonna sleep tomorrow. But in other countries, it's like on the streets and on the roads in park. So I really don't know where people are gonna go. So different directions, I think. Or maybe they make another jungle somewhere else, somewhere around. What do you think the UK government should do about the migrant situation? Uh, they should do, uh, you know, it's all because of UK, you know, whatever is going on here. Uh, French government really, you know, we are, the people like me are here from 20 years and they, it's been like going up and up and from last few months UK government is involved in all that and they are putting money, money, money. So it's a useless to give them message, you know, because nothing gonna come out. Okay. So what, what should I tell them, you know, it's, there are no words, you know, because they know all and the situation in the camp is because of UK. You know, French are kind of paid, uh, paid agents. International relations, you mean? Yeah, you, you know, like they are they are paid now. paid people who are working for UK. They are working for UK, you, you can say. Okay. Yeah, it's all because of UK. Is there anything else um, you want to say? Uh, yes, I want to say, you know, uh, you guys uh, try to show that you guys are reformers, you come to our countries and you want to give us democracy and human rights and freedom. But I'm ashamed if it is democracy, we are better just leave us alone and we promise not to come here again. Just leave us alone in our countries. You will never see this face, it's my promise, the day NATO and other like UK and Americans and all will come out from my countries. You will never see this face again here. Then you need to come to Pakistan to see me. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah man, Thank no you. problem. He, he wants to speak but he can't speak English, you know, and he basically wants to say we was living here, what's wrong with you guys, why you come and why you are destroying our home and jungle, no, no, jungle, this is the God. Kula, go, 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 go. And he what says, young... we got many problems young over. Man, kula, go, go. This is the house. Eh? Go, go, go. This yes. is the money. Go, go. Kula, go. What is that? This is the house. Angela, no, France. This I am Angela. Yeah. Okay. He says he don't want to live in France. He want to go UK. He got many problems in the jungle, but still he is happy to live here. So your government shouldn't do these kind of things to to demolish their homes and their things they're doing here. He don't want to live here, but he has he has no choice. So no, no money, no house, no deep, no no. This is me, This is me. You know he he is no, drunk all no, the time. No, I see him no. most of the time. So. No. He, he, he find a skip with the help of uh, alcohol, you know, so he keep himself uh, out of... Uh, he tried to keep coffee, himself coffee, out coffee, of all coffee. these tensions. I am coughing. He's drunk all the time. Day, day night. Sleep, Same conditions all the time. Sleep, I am here coughing. Sleep, I am here coughing. He says he, when he sleep, he cough too much and he feel... Uh, no, us. No, uh, no. This is uh, no okay. This is a young girl. No young girl. Okay, never no for us. This is uh, me. Okay. This is uh, uh, okay. Uh, no okay. This is uh, Sudan. Okay. This is uh, okay. Well, uh, this is Sudan. One city. He says if his country is okay, Sudan is okay. He want to go back. He don't want to stay here. But it's same there and same here. You know, he don't know what to do in his life. 
Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, Sudan. No France. Yes. He I says don't. he if Sudan is okay, he want to go back, but he don't want to live in France because he says no human rights and no one care about them. So it's better to be in Sudan than France. Finish. What do you want to say to the people of Britain about the jungle, what it's like to live here and why you have given up trying to get to England? England is a very good place to be in England. England is a very good place to be in England. I am not in England, but I am not in England. I am not in England. گال تا خاله لوتن خراب است و وقت سر راه خاله خیور لباس ورزی آرت سر خیور زمین سوگ نرایی دلت فرانسی فروش بس وقت زنگال پسورانگ دا کم است لارسی لارس سختی دی زنگال پسورانگ کانتینر رو کی جای نستا دا پکم خوال لارسی. He says he is not here with his will. You know there is problem in his country, so that's why he is here. But you know he he come here to. To have a good life, to have a safe life, but you know, the, he come here and he see how people are treating us is is something like same thing happening in our country, and uh, he says like uh, I I give up because uh, many guys they are died while they were trying, while they was trying on the train and on the stuff you know they've been they've been died you know in accident and, uh, and it, it's not easy to make to make to go to UK you know so that's why he give up and he. Hello. Good. Yeah. How are you? Good. Yeah. Thank you. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is fine. We're fine. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is fine. We're fine. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is fine. Yeah. A lot of um, I believe you tried many times coming to the church. النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من قال لأخيه صدق لقد ألغى ومن ألغى فلا جمعة له هذه الجمعة المسجد غير ملتمل المسجد غير ممتلئ كيف تكون هانئا كيف تكون راض وهذا جواب هذا 
سؤال للإجابة عليه لابد من مزج أدلة عقلية ونقلية في آن معا هل أنت راض؟ هل جلب لك هذا المال سعادة؟ أنا على يقين أن أغلب بني البشر كل البشر مسلمهم وكافرهم سيقول لك لا لست سعيد لأن المال لا يحقق سعادة لأن صاحب المال يمرض لأن صاحب المال يكتئب ويعتاد الطبيب ويتناول الأدوية مثله كمثل الفقير هب أن رجلا قويا فتيا شابا صغيرا المعيا دوذعيا قد أوتي أسباب القوة والتمكين في الأرض قد تراه مشتت الفكر كثير التخبط والإضراب فإن أوتي مالا أو سعادة أو أوتي قمصانا وبدلا مركات عالمية وقد تزين وتحلى وتصور بما يظنه الناس سعادة دنيوية كثيرا ما تراه مشتت متخبط Just what's the thing? Why I you you only do take the picture? No. It's ju just that uh, um, the work you've done for Australian Army. Not, not security, it was security forces, company. Security, security company for yeah. working in Afghanistan. Um, uh, the uh, work you've done with the army as well. I These work. Things that you, you know, you I should, work. You should be. Uh, I work with the. With considered the for a citizenship on that basis. I work with the different companies. With the with, uh, just I work five years with, the, with the Western. Here, here is the day which I got the certificate. He was Australian. He was a manager. He, he was a uh, NATO assistant. He was a general from Norway. No, no. He is my brother. He is me. Italian general. Yeah, I, I work with the American Army as an interpreter and also I work with the uh, uh, Italian carabinieri in Afghanistan. 
just I have been work with the with the Australian uh, security company. It's called Campos for many years, and right now I'm I'm in a very bad situation in the colors. In the campus, and yeah, and here from the refugee also there is a different people from different mind and culture living in the tents. And, uh, some of them are really danger people, and uh, even from from the French people also they are the people they see that they are fascist they are famous by fascist and uh, from the night no one can go outside because in here uh, the, you are enter the internet and the telephone is not working you have to walk about one hour but the people just they are afraid because if you walk in the street and there is a lot of racist and hundred, uh, yesterday I saw one picture that uh, one Afghan guy he told me that don't walk there because 20 days ago, one of our uh, one of our our roommate was has been killed by the fascists, and they threw him in the in the river. I saw that picture, and um, in here the the situation is very horrible, and, and we need really help. Uh, just from 10 months I am out uh, I just I moved from Afghanistan as in 10 months I didn't find any place and still I'm homeless and I'm searching a place to be settled on but I don't know what will happen in the future and just I'm searching I'm crying and every night I'm going to to cross to get uh, cross the border but it's really impossible and and last night also I been I went there with the security they captured me. But I show one guy a small yeah. Afghan and I told him that he is my brother. If I if I wasn't say that they will take me to the depot center and the depot center is really it's really bad place. It's a very awful and um, it's really it's, a, it's it's really bad more than the tent because it's a tight place and you can take the hair they will put you about two three days and it's a really bad place and um, depot center yeah they have if they, the police capture you and you're trying to, to cross the border they will take you there is a place they call depot center they will take you they will put you for two three days there but the series is not going to make it on it if you have for one week even for one week but the place is really helpful and and uh, it's not a good place. It's a real, very dirty place. So, day to day, is it surviving or are you doing uh, yeah. yeah. Look, I just uh, in, in, in three months, I didn't contact my family. They don't know that where I am I right now. Because I can't, I don't have an internet. Uh, I uh, still I don't have I didn't get access to contact with my family that right now I'm in here and maybe my my family I'm sure that they are they are really worried about me where I am and a few few weeks ago there was a lot of protests and, and they burned the tent and maybe our family watching the TV in the news channel and from three months I I am not in contact with my family. And from from more than like ten months, I I didn't find any place for myself to be, and still I'm homeless, and I don't know what what will happen with me. I, I am sure that in Afghanistan I don't have any place to be there, and it's impossible because day by day the Afghanistan situation is getting very very bad, and especially for the people which work for the Western Western forces in Afghanistan, NATO and American forces and they are the first target for the insurgent like Taliban and right now there's Daesh as well. So if you if you don't want to talk about it then that's fine. Um, about the letter that you have or do you not want to talk about it? The letter which I got from where? From America? Did you show me yeah? Yeah uh, one of our uh, he was our PUC person of contact I work with him for one year. Uh, he is a um, uh, sergeant. 
and Amer right now he is uh, working in uh, South Korea. The American, uh, uh, there is American Army base compound in the South Korea, and he knew about my my problem, and even he read that my brother was shot in his leg, and I still he is injured. And uh, I have that picture. Please do. Yeah, yeah, with the Italian army, I, uh, but but I work with with the American directly, with the American forces in the western of Afghanistan. What is your name? Habib. He says, yeah, I am in big problem. I am living here from uh, eight months and uh, I don't want to stay in France. I want to go to UK, but it's too tough now if you go to try. Police catch him and keep him in prison for 40, 45 days. So they make things worse for them and he want to go to, he really want to go to U UK and live there. So and can he say why is it the UK rather than France? Vale, vale, England, vale, Balzena. Balzeke, Italy, to comment that the Sarawi so car no work. Oh, the car pay da ke oru rajana. The Kumbal P Mal Kasnata na guadi London da sida jawali alta be karam kawe shi awaga da. He says in Europe it's like that. Like uh, he got Italian documents and he can't work in any country. Uh, on these documents, like in France or in uh, in other countries, but uh, when he go to UK, he can find work for him and he can survive. He can live a better life a bit. So that's why he want to go to UK, you know, not there, you know, because he can't do anything there.
So, can you tell us um, why are you doing this and what is this protest about? Uh, this protest is about the people of the jungle, the refugees, I mean. And what is it that you hope to get from this? You know, we want to be heard, always. We want our voice to be heard. And what we is did it that, want? yeah, we did that because we wouldn't be be heard. And what is it you want people to hear? They want, they want, we want them to do something about these people. Let's all take care of these people. And do you mean you mean the governments? Do you mean England, uh, the, the British government, or do you mean no, the French no, no, government? No, any government. And how long have you been carrying on with the protest now? Uh, today is our tenth, tenth day. How many are with you in this protest? With us, there are so many people who are ready to do this, but we do not let them. They are just supporting us one way or another, not with stitches mouth. Is there any message you want <coughs> us to bring back to people that you would like them to hear? All we want to, to these people to do for us is just <coughs> put some pr pressure on their governments. And they, I, I, I mean that they can't under, they, they can feel what we are feeling, but at least come here and see, see this horrible place in prison. <coughs> بعد اینکه چی تا الان جوابی نگرفتیم چی فقط میخوام بیام به پرنده ها رسیه کنم این وضعیت رو ببینن دیگه ما هم براخره ما هم انصاف انسانیم بی انصافیه داره در رقم هاشیم فقط میخوام ازشون که ما رو حمایت کنم حمایت همون کنن کل مردم دنیا ما هم انسانیم دیگه پشت همون باشن حمایت همون کنن حرف دیگه این هم سکوت همون فریاد زدیم که حمایت میخوایم با سلام منم به حمایت از دوستانم دوام دوختم و میخوام که کل دنیا صدامونو بشنون و از این مجموعه حمایت کنن چرا که اینجا پناهنده هایی که هستن دارای زن و بچه و همه میخوان زندگیشون درست باشه و از یه جای امنی برخوردار باشه شما من این سازمان دنیا افکی آخر ما بکنه حالا هیچ که آنها ده روزه هیچ نخوردیم هیچ که نیستیم یاد بگه آقا چی از چی نیست من نیستم فقصان در نکنم من هم از تمام ملت دنیا، تمام مردم دنیا تقاضا دارم ببیننمون این وضعیت پناهنده ها نیست و حمایت همون کنن همین
My name is Andre Naylor and I'm here to help the refugees in Calais. Where have you come from and, and how did you find out about this? And I came from the United States. My wife and I came here from the United States to help the people here in Calais. It's an ongoing refugee crisis and uh, a lot of people can't come or they don't think they will be able to help. But you just sometimes you just need to show up someplace and have a presence to show people you're in solidarity with them. Uh, they were all humanitarians. This isn't a religious organization. This isn't a, this isn't a political organization. This human beings helping human beings, and um, uh, so that we we decided to come to help, see what we can do. We asked all the people in our church, all of our friends and family, if they would donate, and in their place we would come here, see what they needed, take the money, and buy whatever they needed. I think today we're going to buy gas for people's cooking. Heat, cooking and heating for tonight because there's so many people displaced. They're out on the streets right now. So now it's sleeping bags and backpacks instead of houses, so. Can I ask you, um, if you were going back home to explain to people what it was like here, what, how would you describe what's happening? For, for me, it's the, um, it's unbelievable. It's just insane. 
and humanity. It's a, you see humanity at its worst and in, at its and best. Surprised. The refugees are kind and they're gentle and they've been concerned for us and they thank us every minute. And um, the, it's it's overwhelming, you know, um, to see people that's been their their homes have been destroyed, their families have been bombed and um, kids killed and they have to leave their countries and they come here and they feel like For okay safety. I'm in a I'm in a safe place I'm in France and their how their little shelter for the winter that they've you know have built are being torn down it's it's um it's inhuman you we, in America there's there's commercials all the time and I know in England too about save the dogs save the cats well let's save some people you know it's just wrong what's going on Gently down, okay? Gently down. Down slowly, okay? Down slowly, keep forward. You're doing a great job, that's perfect, okay? My name's Ryan Ferrier, I'm from Edinburgh in Scotland, been here for about five months. Can you tell us um, why was it that you decided to come over and do what you're doing and tell us what you are doing? Um, uh, uh, my friend uh, created uh, the crowdfunding website for Edinburgh um, and asked uh, me and a group of people that I know if we wanted to come over to volunteer for at least a minimum of two weeks uh, and I'd, I came over and ended up staying for five months. Uh, I do a lot of the building work, so I put, I, recently I've been dismantling and moving and rebuilding shelters in the, from the south to the north. 
Um, but I also take part in the personal distributions, food distributions, um, things with the dome that was here very recently. That was a sort of community space for theatre workshops, art workshops, things like that. Just a safe place where people can come and integrate without criticism or being nervous. It's just trying to create a safe environment. Um, and aside from that, just building relationships with the locals and learning the local languages and trying to make as many friends as possible. And why are you motivated to actually come here and do what you're doing? Um, at first, it was for a bit of life experience, uh, try and learn some more skills. Uh, and then I ended up getting to know a few people here quite closely and decided that I wanted to actually stay and do more and help out. Um, thought about going home, but I didn't, didn't really feel comfortable when I knew I was somebody that could really make a difference, even in, within the existing group of volunteers. Uh, so I ended up staying in the jungle like a small group of other volunteers. Um, so we live and work here, so we're pretty much with the locals and they really appreciate that. Uh, and just before we finish up, just your overall view of what's going on here, the situation that there is for these people. <laughs> if, could, if, if you were back home and somebody said to you, well, what's it like? How would you explain it to people? Oh... <laughs> um, I think the first tactic I'd use is that I'd, I'd try and put, I'd try and force somebody to think about it as if it was them and their family. Because um, one thing I've learned pretty quickly is it's really easy for people to not remain ignorant but to detach themselves from the situation because it's so far away and it's nothing to do with them. And But it's not actually that far away at all. Um, so I, I think I'd sit people down and ask them, what it would be like for them if they had to cross through eight different countries by foot, spend all their life savings, paying somebody to get them across the border and w with no guarantee whether or not that person would actually succeed. And then maybe force them to think about what it would be like to lose a loved one in that journey, like fighting for everything and having nothing after giving it all away. Um, and then reaching here and having to rely on outside resources because that is literally the only way to survive. Um, I think people need to actually sit down and think about it as if, what if it was your wife, your sister, your daughter, your son? Um, I think if people actually succeeded in doing that, then more people might be inclined to help. Okay, um, so this is the cold food packing station. We really need things like uh, tin fish. Ring pool's much, much better. So obviously people are able to open it and they're not going to rely on tin openers, tin tomatoes, tin chickpeas, um, oil, onions as well, really, really important. Onions are used in both the actually hot food preparation and the cold uh, packages as well. So please, please bring things like that. Not in glass jars though. So no like tomato sauces or pasta sauces in glass jars. We don't send those out to camp. Um, if anybody has any contacts with any, I don't know, fruit suppliers, things like that, that's much better than trying to send over some chocolate. So if you can also get in touch with us, if you know anybody, um, vitamin C, let's get some oranges out to camp. Something healthy, something good for the immune system. So literally about five days ago, we had absolutely nothing. You probably saw it on the Facebook pages. Um, yeah, we were empty and now look at it. You have responded, you've been phenomenal. So yeah, big thank you from the Bird from the Grant to help refugees and everybody here in Calais. Um, it's been great. I know though that this is gonna disappear very, very quickly. We've got a brilliant team uh, who are on break at the moment, but sorting through all of this stuff, finding the appropriate things and it'll be going straight out to camp. So is the van being loaded, right? Absolutely, the van is currently being loaded right now. We have delivery vans that go out throughout the day to both camps, so it's a constant process. Um, it's constantly shifting out. And so we will need you to continue support and continue collecting. Um, it's really, really important that we get a, a stable flow of aid, because obviously the need from the camp is always, always there. It doesn't just change when suddenly, you know, summer holidays are great, and things like uh, Christmas holidays, you get loads of people, loads of aid but people in the camp there need consistent. So come out if you can, give us a hand, help us to sort it, and then we can get it out.
tooth out to the people that need it. Uh, 75,000 packets of sanitary towels at the moment and we really, really just don't need more. So don't waste the space in the van by bringing something that we're not requesting. Again, like I said, pay attention to those lists. They are vital because they help us to bridge those gaps. So at the moment, you see the pink box over there, that's the only razors we've got. So we're low on razors. Those will disappear very, very fast. We get almost 10,000 hygiene packs out every single month. So we need a lot of razors and stuff like that. Um, so rather than sanitary towels, focus on the things on the list. It makes a big, big difference um, to our ability to respond. But yeah, no sanitary towels, thousands of them. What, what sort of attitude do uh, um, the volunteers need to come over with? I think the most important thing is that people come over and that they're flexible and adaptable and happy just to muck in wherever. Um, sometimes people come with an idea of how they can help which is great and that enthusiasm is fantastic but there are just so many cogs to this machine and wherever you do end up it is vital um, and it is an important role in the whole picture so just know that you are so so valued and that there are so many different kinds of people here we have lots of different professions different ages different backgrounds so there will always be a slot and a niche for you so just come be open flexible and yeah, join in, muck in with everybody else. How has the situation changed over the couple of weeks, last couple of weeks since the southern part of the country destroyed? Um, obviously, with the eviction in the southern sector, it's been extra stressful. The long-term volunteers have been particularly stretched, and it's been a really crucial time for us to reach out and be able to say to you, we need your help, and you really responded. We were concerned at first. We had almost no stock in. Um, we have the new camp in Dunkirk opening, so an increased need there, as well as people being evicted in Calais but thankfully we said hey we need your help and you've come um, we've got piles of things now which is great but I also know that's going to last a week two weeks and it will be gone we have such a high turnover of things here and um, particularly with so many people being relocated and, and their lives being disturbed it's been difficult knowing that I'm here and I have to stay mostly at the warehouse when there's people that have become my friends people that I've lived alongside for many many months who are going through hell um, and that's very difficult to remain here and not be there trying to stand in solidarity. But it's important for me as well, I guess, to, to like I said earlier, be flexible and do what's needed. And it was to, to stay here, help these things run and, and provide the aid that those people would then need as a consequence of the eviction. Um, obviously, a lot of hope went into the court case that we, we had and the appeal. And we lost those, which was very sad and frustrating, um, particularly for me who somebody who really likes law and I, I studied law and I had a lot of faith in it um, but my, that faith hasn't disappeared because it, it remains in the people that I'm working with and that you the public saying we see this as a situation needs support and we're going to do something and step in um, obviously there's smaller camps that have cropped up and Dunkirk's had extra pressure from people moving from Calais to Dunkirk so our workload has increased a lot what are the main uh, items of clothing, clothing that are needed um, more than ever, we need uh, men's gloves. I mean, the sun is out at the moment, but it can get bitterly freezing. There was snow just the other day, frost on the windscreen. It's still very, very cold. And the moment you get wet, you know, there's, there's really no way to beat that. The warehouse, although it's full of blankets right now, it's out of men's gloves. Um, so men's gloves, men's underwear, women's underwear, small, medium. We really don't have very many big people in camp. It's the nationality. So when we say this is a list of things we need, please pay attention to those lists. Go on to Facebook, check out the People to People Solidarity pages, the Le Berge de Migrant page, the Help Refugees page. All the support and advice is there for you if you need it. You can also contact CalaisDonations at gmail.com for updated lists. But at the moment, things like razors, toilet paper, underwear, gloves, thick waterproof coats, and as always, trainers and walking boots. Please, no other shoe. Trainers and walking boots only, they are simply the best thing in this kind of the conditions of the camp. They support the ankle, they're flexible, um, sizes 41 to 43 only. We just don't have big feet, so again, there's no point sending it. Otherwise, we're going to have to ship it back out again. Um, and that's a lot of waste of time and energy for you and ourselves, so pay attention to those lists. Where can people stay if they want to volunteer? There's lots of options for staying and accommodation. Um, obviously, some people bring their own vans and they end up staying in vans. Uh, we do have some caravans on site, but 
a lot of those people have bought for themselves. We've run out of space now, and even long-term volunteers don't necessarily get a spot. So we'd advise that you organise yourself. Come together as a group, organise Airbnb. Um, it's a great, great way to, there's lots of different options in the local area to have a bit of independence, um, but obviously be with a group at the same time. Um, and it's cheaper. Otherwise, there is a local youth hostel, uh, the only youth hostel actually in Calais, that offers a discount if you volunteer with us. So that's another really nice option. And of course, you meet lots of volunteers in the morning we have a volunteer shuttle bus free shuttle bus that comes and picks people up at 8 30 so yeah just mucking get in contact with people and see if you can self-organize have you got a message for the uk government huh. um what i would say is is my message isn't to the british government it's to the british people don't forget that you are your government Sometimes I even have disassociated myself to the actions of my government. And although I didn't actually vote personally, this particular government in, it is representing me. And so rather than waiting for another few years so that I can vote in a ballot box, vote every day with what you do with your hands and your feet. Take your time to have your say. Okay, and by doing that, British government, you will pay attention to the people that are voting you in. So get on it, get up and do something about it.